Keith? Thanks, Kevin. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to our, our January call. Um, thank you for being a little bit flexible on our uh, on our calendar. Uh, we switched weeks uh, for this as we had a board meeting in the same time frame uh, last week, and uh, I appreciate everybody's flexibility. Uh, Kevin, do you have the agenda? So uh, what I'd like to run today, we have a full agenda. We've had a lot uh, a lot going on and a lot of things that we want to get to. So I'll hope uh, that everyone will, will be succinct in their remarks, and I'll try to be myself. Um, I'll give you some quick updates on the foundation. Uh, Rudy will uh, give us a quick update on what's happening in marketing and the 2015 calendar. And then I've asked uh, the the 3C committee co-chairs to come in and reprise their presentations that they made to the board this last week uh, so that you can you know see what we're communicating from the 3C committees to the board of directors. And then we'll have a, a quick update on the Michael J. Fox uh, and Transmart Foundation Datathon that we're putting together. Uh, Ken Kubota will give us uh, an overview of that. Uh, we have a, a, an overview of the Bug Fixathon. Uh, I hope Terry is going to make it uh, online to, to help us with that. And then uh, uh, Kays von Bakov will come in and uh, tell us a little bit about the architecture roadmap uh, and workshop that we put together and, and how that's run. Kevin? So the, the high-level update, if you only see one slide today, this is the one. Um, from a management team perspective, uh, we welcomed uh, a couple of new members uh, to the foundation today, or this week, uh, actually this month. Uh, Jamie Katisha has joined us uh, to help facilitate uh, our work on the intellectual property around the platform copyright. Uh, Jamie is a, a colleague of mine. I've got a slide on this, and I'll, I'll give you a, a quick background, but uh, we're really glad to, to bring him on board and, and have him help us with this. We're also uh, bringing on Steve Johnson, who will join uh, February 1st uh, to facilitate what we're doing in fundraising and finance committee efforts, etc. Uh, Steve is a, an experienced public and private CFO. He has a nonprofit uh, board experience, lots of fundraising experience, and we're looking forward to having him uh, help us out on, on that end. From an operations perspective, uh, we're continuing to activate the three C committees. That's been uh, very successful, a lot of good effort. I want to thank Sherry and Julie and uh, uh, and Jay for their efforts in, in pushing this uh, forward, but uh, this is a really incredibly important part of what we're doing, and you'll see uh, what those activities are today, and, and hopefully you'll get involved. Uh, from marketing <coughs> communications perspective, uh, we're scaling over 2015. We have a lot of new initiatives, and Rudy will take us through that. And then uh, we kicked off the fundraising for our fellowship program, and uh, I'm looking for help on, on things from the community, so uh, you'll see that at the end of the, the presentation as well. On the board of directors side, as just a reminder, we meet on a quarterly basis. We had our last meeting on January 20th. Uh, we had a focus on uh, what's happening with the three C committees and on strategy and strategic issues uh, for the foundation. Uh, it was a really good board meeting. Our next board meeting will be uh, April 21st in Boston. Next slide. Um, to give you just an overview of the current uh, foundation staffing, uh, we have. Uh, added a couple of people, but uh, the, the three officers are myself, Kevin, and Ashley George. Uh, the management team, uh, Brian, uh, E.K., Michael, and Rudy. And then uh, we've added Steve Johnson uh, to be working uh, as our VP of Finance, uh, working with, uh, with Ashley and with myself. And in addition, uh, we've brought Terry Weymouth on uh, in uh, a kickoff of the Fellows Program, which is currently being funded by the operations budget. Um, which will transition to the fellowship budget as soon as we get that program in place. Uh, Terry has joined us uh, at, at 50% uh, from University of Michigan, and uh, Jamie Katisha has joined us as, uh, as a, uh, a fellow for the copyright project uh, that we're working on. Next slide. Uh, you'll get a, a, some detail at the end of the, uh, end of the meeting from Kays on the architecture workshop. Uh, but uh, we're very pleased to, to begin working on, in a formal way, the, the architecture for a version two of the code. Um, I will emphasize here, um, this is a, a long-term, uh, forward-reaching project, thinking about where the next uh, generation of the platform should go, uh, but is not at all detracting from what we're doing with the version one platform and the version 1.2 in terms of production and the work that you'll see with the bug fixathon. So pretty excited about uh, having the group get together, the core developers. Uh, we'll have a number of additional meetings coming along, which, uh, which Kays will take us to. Next slide. Um, uh, we are kicking off the platform copyright project here uh, with Jamie joining us uh, to take this on on a dedicated basis. Um, just to remind people that the current copyright um, to the platform is owned by Johnson & Johnson uh, under the license GPL version 3, which is a strict open source license. 
uh, that uh, is something that we want to work on, uh, getting the stewardship of the code to be in the, in the hands of the foundation. Uh, so Jamie is joining us. Jamie is uh, uniquely qualified in this space. Um, he's not only a world-class uh, bioinformaticist, um, having uh, worked with the Genome Database and started to kick that off at Johns Hopkins, also working with uh, the Supercomputing Center, establishing that at the Hospital for Sick Kids in Toronto, uh, but also has uh, his uh, degree in, uh, in law and has been a practicing intellectual property attorney as well. And so he brings together this uh, unique set of skills around bioinformatics and really understanding the key challenges that we have uh, on our platform and in our community as well as a deep experience with intellectual property and, and how we manage those things. So Jamie is, uh, is joining us. I think he uh, is even on the call today. Um, but you may see him around and uh, certainly welcome him. And, and he may be talking to many of you uh, as we uh, push this project forward. Uh, in addition, we uh, are pushing forward our Mirror to Generation Datathon. Uh, this is a, an effort uh, jointly between uh, the Transmark Foundation and the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Uh, we're bringing together a group of uh, data scientists, neuroscientists, uh, developers to uh, work on the two key data sets in this space that have been sponsored by Michael J. Fox, the ADNI data set and the PPMI data set. Uh, these are all uh, been put up in Transmark, uh, sponsored by the Michael J. Fox Foundation and implemented by Thomson Reuters. And uh, we'll have a three-day event where we'll bring uh, these developers and, and scientists together uh, with three key objectives. Um, I'll lay them on the slide here, but I'll have uh, Ken take you through those in more detail. Uh, we're currently planning uh, for March 17th to 19th. Uh, just an FYI, we have found that that conflicts with a big Alzheimer's and Parkinson's meeting in Europe. And so we're exploring alternate dates, which would be April 7th to 9th. Uh, we have a uh, site uh, uh, donated to us for, by Thomson Reuters, so we'll host that in San Francisco. And uh, there are additional data sets to add in PPMI that we're working to add. If you have questions on this, uh, Ken will take you through this today, and you can ask any questions you like. In addition, we've had uh, a number of great discussions with uh, Genomics England, uh, our key partner, Dave Brown, uh, who is our partner at BT Global Services and really helped get us kicked off on, on the cloud uh, platform hosting that we've done for the platform, uh, has now joined Genomics England, and uh, we've been in discussions with them. Uh, Dave has told us that uh, you know, one of the key objectives they have there is a, is a, a knowledge repository and, and knowledge management platform to enable people to mine the data that Genomics England is producing. And uh, they made an initial decision to go with Transmart, and we're working with David to, to help make that decision a really good one for them, and then help them you know, to advance the platform in ways that help them achieve their mission. So we're welcoming Genomics England to the fold, and we're pretty excited about moving forward on this. Next slide. Uh, one of the key initiatives for the foundation is ensuring that we have a stable and working production platform. Uh, the version 1.2 has been this. Uh, we've implemented a code governance program there that's uh, being led by Terry Weymouth, uh, now officially from the foundation. And uh, one of the keys for us is releasing patches and bug fixes to this platform to continue to enhance its stability and, and uh, scalability. Uh, we've released uh, three patches. I think we're on 1.2.3 is the most recent. And uh, we've seen a backlog of, of bugs grow in the JIRA platform. Uh, so working with EKGO, our, our CTO, uh, we've uh, planned out a bug fix-a-thon uh, where Terry and Peter Rice will, will really be implementing a project managing this effort. Uh, Terry's got some slides that will take us through and, and give us some details on that. Next slide. Uh, another great milestone for us is the end of the year. Uh, we finally completed and filed our 501c3 filing. Uh, you can see here this is just a scanned image of the check that we sent to the IRS. Um, we expect to hear back from them uh, somewhere in the six to nine, nine month time frame uh, for approval. Uh, this has been a bit delayed just because of various furloughs from the, uh, uh, um, the sequester and, and some things that have impacted the, the U.S. government. Uh, but we do expect to hear back in sort of the June to September time frame. Next slide. Uh, in terms of foundation initiatives and funding, um, we're moving forward on the operations. You can see the operation team, how that's growing and, and really uh, ensuring that we meet the missions and goals of the foundation. Uh, the fellowship program we've kicked off now. Uh, there's a, a three FTEs that we need to support the platform, code governance, et cetera. Uh, we have are for the short term funding some of these efforts out of the operations budget, uh, but that's a short term solution and there will be fundraising to, to fill this out. And then finally, as we embark on a version two development program, uh, we're working on developing the right kinds of budgets and funding mechanisms to ensure that we can develop the next generation of the platform. Next slide. 
Just a, an overview from that from a financial perspective. Uh, from the membership program in 2014, we raised $672,000. Uh, our goal is to grow that uh, by almost 50% here uh, in 2015. Our target is $1,085,000, uh, and we need your help to do that. Um, if there are groups that you can uh, convince that they should join the foundation uh, or leads you can give me uh, in pursuing that, uh, we'd like to welcome a number of new groups to the foundation, particularly those that are being very active uh, with the platform but are not members of the community. Secondly, the fellowship program. Uh, we kicked that off last week with the board of directors. Um, our target for this and the budget that we've approved going forward is uh, over three, it's a little over three years. It takes us to the end of fiscal 2018. Um, is a target of 2.4 million, 2.46, uh, and we're working on raising that. Uh, this is a, an effort that uh, is really foundation-wide and is to ensure that we have the governance and the support and the key functions that we need to support this platform going forward. So you'll hear a lot more about that as we go forward in the future, but our goal is to get that money raised uh, in the first half of the year. Uh, the development program, as I said, is in a planning stage. Uh, the key elements with the architecture will help us organize this and move this forward. Uh, and so you'll see more about this as we learn more about the roadmap for version 2. Next slide. So that's, uh, that's my quick update. Um, you'll get more details on some of these things going forward. And I'd like to hand it over to Rudy to give you uh, an update on what we're doing with uh, marketing, documentation, and uh, the 2015 calendar. Rudy. Okay, thank you, Keith. Um, next slide, please. Uh, first, I'll go through the calendar. Uh, this year, there's a lot of activities. We're really trying to step up uh, a lot of our, our marketing uh, presence uh, in an effort to support both uh, the missions and then goals to bring more membership in, but especially uh, also to grow the number of people using the platform, people's awareness of it, uh, and to encourage uh, extending the usage uh, across the community. Um, we have uh, our ongoing board of directors meetings uh, as I've uh, laid out there. Uh, these community calls will continue again the third Tuesday every month at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, no changes for the rest of the year and so uh, we hope everybody will come visit. Um, all of the presentations, uh, both a recording and the slide decks are online uh, on the website and so please if you miss it or if you, someone's interested to hear it again or, or look at the slides, all that's available to you. Um, we will be uh, attending uh, and exhibiting at two conferences uh, this year so far, um, the Molecular Triad Conference in San Francisco, middle of February. We will have an exhibit booth, our first, uh, and uh, hopefully if anybody is there, please come by and say hello. I will be there. Uh, also at BioIT World, uh, we will have an exhibit. Uh, there's also a number of other activities going on. We plan to have another community meeting in the evening there. Uh, there, uh, we will have a presentation. Uh, I'm sure some of you may have presentations. Uh, if you have presentations at these conferences or really any conference, please let me know. We'd like to keep uh, our event list uh, on, up to date on the website so that uh, people in the community can see where uh, all of us are speaking about the, the, the platform and the types of activities that are going on. Uh, and then our uh, annual meeting will be held this year in Europe. We're looking for a site, a uh, number of discussions underway, and we hope to have an announcement uh, where and exactly when that will be shortly so we can start planning uh, that event. Next slide, please. Um, other uh, conferences that we'll be speaking at, uh, Keith is speaking in Budapest in Hungary, uh, a number of other conferences of interest that we will have some uh, participation in, uh, a number of things that we're, we're looking at. Uh, in, in, in fact, if there's anything that uh, any particular conference in the fall in uh, Europe, uh, we would actually consider having another an additional uh, booth this year. Uh, so, looking for some ideas there, and I encourage uh, anyone to uh, let me know, please. And then, hey, uh, yeah, go ahead. Have, have you captured the EDI conference here in Boston in April? We're um, having a session on Transmart there. I, 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 we should capture that on the calendar. Yeah, I, I think it might be online. I just didn't put it on the slide. Okay, fantastic. So, you know, again, you know, we have an events uh, section on the website and, um, you know, try to keep that stuff in there. And then, uh, obviously, the thons, the bug, you know, fix-a-thons and data-thons. I'm sure there will be some hackathons coming. Uh, we try to keep these up to date on the website. Please check it out and see. I also have now added a developers page there that I'm uh, working with Terry uh, on. And so, uh, again, a lot, of, a lot of information continues to be on the website. We're trying to keep it as up to date as we can. Next slide. 
Uh, we're announcing today uh, our training program is finally kicking off. Uh, we've been working with uh, Julie Bryant at Rancho uh, and coordinating also with Thompson Reuters uh, to start a free monthly training session. Um, once a month, we'll have a two-hour training session uh, that will be free. Uh, it's uh, intended to be a, like a 90-minute training plus a Q&A period um, and having it on the last Monday of each month. Uh, again, there will be information on the website uh, on some of the details about this. Uh, we'll try to we we'll keep the, the, the um, attendance limited and alternating month to month on an earlier and later schedule to try to accommodate all the time zones uh, as best we can for now. Uh, and um, it will be alternating between Rancho and Thomson Reuters. Uh, although it's not exclusive, uh, any other vendors who are interested, uh, please talk to me uh, and we can um, you know, discuss you know adding more people to that, but this is intended to get you know for for new people to the to the platform. They want to get uh, kind of jump started, uh, learn you know, how to quickly get in and use the system, uh, and that's that's the goal here. So please um, again check the website. You will have to register you know to attend the class, uh, and we're still working on them. Uh, and this is free. Um, later in the year, we are putting together some extended training classes that will be um, uh, maybe half day or full day. Uh, for administration training, uh, advanced user training, uh, and then uh, other possible things like a custom training for your organization. So again, if you have interest, uh, let me know and we can talk more about it. Next slide. Um, uh, our marketplace is also being kicked off. Uh, we are putting together a vendor marketplace. Uh, Michael Braxenthaler has been leading this initiative uh, and is now open for vendors to register. You can go to the website if you are a vendor. Uh, and if you supply training, you know, platform administration, deployment services, curation, uh, and register your, your company. Uh, and uh, if you're interested, you know, again, go to the website and uh, you can register there. Uh, next slide. Um, this page is up, uh, as I say there, and both vendors can register. And if you might be interested in just being on the marketplace mailing list, uh, we're also starting to collect information about uh, for those interested just to get an ongoing uh, information about you know, new vendors, new offerings, uh, and this will be open uh, to uh, any vendors who are supplying things for uh, members of the community and, um, you know, try to, to keep a, a nice place where you can go and, and check out what's, what people are doing. Uh, next slide. Uh, now I'll talk uh, briefly about documentation. I'm going to invite Eric Kaplan, who's been uh, leading this project, to, to just give a quick update uh, on where we are. Uh, Eric, I think uh, you're unmuted. Hello. Yes, hello. Am I, can yeah. people hear me? Sounds good. Yes. Great. So the um, first thing with documentation, I want to send, extend extraordinary kudos to Tony Lovin, who has just been doing a crackerjack job on helping us really move this project forward. Um, we're really lucky to have him. Um, the slide you have before you, um, there's actually two. The first slide is discusses the status of a working user, user manual that Tony has been updating based upon the newest information we have for version 1.2. And as you can see, in its current form, there are 13 chapters with appendices. And if you look to the right-hand column, it tells what's done and what needs more work and what needs to be started. So if any of you listening to the call have particular knowledge related to the functions that still require more work, it would be great if you could ping Tony and me or Rudy, Tony and me after this call to let us know what you have on those particular items. Um, if anybody actually, let's open it up, if anybody right now on the call has knowledge about any of these particular things, maybe the best thing to do would be to just type in where it says type question here. Um, and you could give us some feedback right now, and then we'd know to get back to you. I think that would be really helpful, um, rather than open up the mic to everybody and create a cacophony. Um, can we go to the next slide? The next slide speaks to many of the new features. Um, and if Tony has any comments here, too, um, if we could unmute Tony's line, that would also be helpful. Um, we have some work on a number of these. I want to thank Anik from Sanofi, I believe she's at Sanofi, for getting me a good deal of information related to the high dimension data model and the three items at the top and the bottom. 
And I also want to thank the people at the Hive for getting some information to us as well. But again, if anybody on this call has specific information about any of these features which we've listed as investigating, if you could either type something in right now and let us know or ping us um, offline, that would be terrific. Um, so sort of the overall comment is what was once moving at a snail's pace is now moving at a turtle's pace, but our goal is to have it moving at a hare's pace very soon. And I, again, we're really grateful for all of the wonderful work Tony has done and the sort of substance and um, real brilliance he's added to this effort. Um, okay, anything thanks. else to say? Yeah, thanks, Eric. That's, that's super. Um, I just want to add one thing that we're, we're going to publish the, a draft version of this within the next two weeks. Uh, we think there's enough there that it's actually starting, it's really useful. Uh, we will try, we'll keep it, you know, identifying what's, what's finished and what's still, you know, under development. But um, I think it will be useful to the, to the community to have this out there. So we're working hard to get to that first um, public version of this. Thanks, Eric. Okay, I think we're done, um, Kevin. Great. Uh, Thank you, Rudy. So um, next we're going to move into the 3C committee and, uh, and working group updates. I don't see Sherry Cow on the, the call today. I know Boston has been inundated, as has been the, the Northeast with snow, and I know she wasn't sure last night whether she was going to connect. So what I will do on her behalf is give a quick update on the community committee activities and then I will hand that off to Jay Bergeron to update on the code committee and associated working groups and then Julie Bryant from Rancho will round out what the content committee is doing. So jumping right into the community committee. Um, at our annual meeting in Ann Arbor in October we spent some time revisiting committee goals. We spent some time um, revisiting and defining working groups and setting uh, some objectives for a three-month period leading up to the end of the year. And in that time frame, we've met um, as, as a committee to define those working groups, and in each case we've defined a mission, uh, an initial set of group members, and three, six, 12-month goals. I'll work, walk through those very quickly. And then um, to sort of summarize our, our goal and objective for the next three months is to really operationalize this framework that, that um, I'll walk you through momentarily and then try and, and grow um, uh, participation in those groups uh, through our, our member community. So the community committee really has two overarching goals. One is to engage and stabilize the existing community, and the second high-level goal is to, to grow the community. And that is done through content enrichment, platform stability, user education, and platform evolution. And that is done um, across all three of the three C committees, the community committee working with the code committee and working with the, the content committee. With respect to the community committee, we've defined a, um, a handful of working groups. You see uh, this presented on the slide with Dave Merberg from Decada with support from Kristen and Deborah from Thomson Reuters heading up the use case working group. Rudy has uh, and continues to um, lead our communications working group, and so I'm sure all of you have seen the results of, of his activities um, for, for quite some time now. Julie Bryant uh, from Rancho working with Yanni Pondis from uh, Imperial College slash Etrix with support from Kristen and Marcy from TR and Michigan respectively have been working on user training and documentation. As Rudy has already said, Michael Braxenthaler from Roche has been uh, leading our marketplace activities. I continue to head up uh, our activities around the monthly community call. And then Sherry Cow, with support from Yanni and myself, are acting as a liaison uh, for the community committee working with code and content to make sure that our activities are synergized and, and are productive. 
So our next slide uh, really shows uh, the relationship of the three committees where the community committee is really trying to drive uh, um, uh, the development of the platform working very closely with EK and J and uh, the, the, the developer community around design, coding, and platform evolution. Like eyes with Julie Bryant and Brian Athey around content cataloging, curation, and distribution of, of, of content. Jumping quickly, I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, uh, on each of these slides. Uh, I would encourage you to, to look at the slides offline, but for the communications working group, we have a defined mission, a set of goals, and uh, resources identified that are needed to really um, move this uh, uh, communications working group along. Uh, just to summarize, the mission of the, work, of the communications working group is to really inform scientists within and outside the Transmark community of the value and capabilities of Transmark. Dave Merberg, as I mentioned, is heading up the use case uh, working group. The mission there is to inform scientists within and outside of Transmark of, of uh, the platform capabilities. And so they've been working to establish a operational definition for a use case. They've uh, put together uh, a process for collecting and standardizing that information so that it can be displayed in a consistent and useful way to our community of, of scientists, informaticians, as well as developers. Their goal is to collect 10 to 20 use cases and, and make those available to the community as, as a whole. And so um, they are looking to put together a team of three to five volunteers and they're very actively pursuing that. Likewise, on the user guide and training working group, um, Julie and others are, are really um, putting in motion um, resources to provide online and on-site training, both for new and experienced users. Uh, they, uh, as, as Rudy just mentioned, are, are moving forward with making monthly online training sessions available. They're working to develop that out. So clearly, Rudy and, and Julie are your go-to people to, to get involved either uh, to, to perhaps um, help provide training or if you have uh, questions or concerns about what training uh, the foundation is putting in place, uh, they're your go-to people. As we move forward with the monthly community calls, we really want to expand uh, the, the information that we provide to you on an ongoing basis. So um, as you saw in December and now uh, in January, we will be doing regular updates on the three C committees, their associated working groups. We are working with some of the major projects like uh, TRAIT as well as ETRIX to get regular updates from them. And then uh, as we go forward, we want to introduce a feature segment where it, um, uh, there's an opportunity for specific projects or a service provider to share what is going on with the community at large. The marketplace you've heard about before, uh, it's early days in terms of phase one with a simple listing of service providers by service segment. Uh, Rudy working with Michael Braxenthaler will be working then with our marketplace community around advertising, marketing, other features, and then that will eventually lead into uh, a phase three where we will be looking at a certification program. Sherry leads up our liaison working group, and again, as I said earlier, the goal of, of this uh, uh, working group is to really make sure there is effective communication across the three C committees and to assure that the coordination and synergy are really optimistic from a community point of view. And so to that end, uh, uh, Sherry has organized a monthly meeting of the three C co-chairs. We're working with the uh, product management team from the code committee to make sure that we are coordinating and communicating what is going on. And uh, again, we are looking to the community at large for volunteers, not only with this liaison working group, but with the other community committee working groups, as well as code and content working groups that Jay and Julie will talk about momentarily. So there are a number of things that uh, the working groups from a community perspective um, have accomplished to date. Um, 
a lot of you have seen this already in terms of uh, the website uh, updates and maintenance and enhancements that Rudy's been doing. Um, we see um, here the, the uh, use case template that the uh, use case working group has developed out in terms of, of goals, available data, methods, as well as, as Transmart examples of, of implementation of those use cases. We uh, now have a product management feature catalog that is on the, the Foundation uh, Wiki. We will make sure to communicate that out on a regular basis, and we really look to the community at large to help uh, develop out the content that you see featured here. So in summary, uh, the key message from the community committee is that we now have a structure set. The working groups are moving forward. They're active. We have mission, vision, action. Uh, the community committee functions as a driver working um, with the other three seat committees on content enrichment and pro platform evolution. And we are now focusing on operationalizing this framework. So with that, um, I will stop and uh, turn things over to Jay Bergeron, who will uh, walk us through um, the code committee updates. So Jay, I, I hope that uh, you're online. It looks like you are and able to present. Jay, are you there? Okay, we'll give Jay one more moment, and if he doesn't come online, I will walk through his slides, and we'll go from there. Jay, it uh, doesn't look like we can um, we can hear you. I sent you an audio pin. Um, you may have to type that in real quick. Okay, we see your interactions, Jay, um, on the question. It looks like you either need to go over to Voice over IP or enter your PIN, at which time you'd be able to um, speak. I think his PIN is pound 112 pound. Is that right? Jay? Yes, type in pound 112 pound. Okay, I will go ahead, and if Jay uh, is able to come online, I'll uh, let him pick up where, wherever we're at. So, um, as presented at the October board meeting, um, the, the goal of uh, the, the code committee is to really build a Transmart ecosystem that evolves the platform into a modern service-based uh, big data architecture. Uh, scaling uh, of the Transmart application to a broader field of capabilities is, is a key objective. And of course, federation across our global community is something that uh, is important going forward. And Jay, I see that it looks like you're online. So if you're there, please speak up and I'll pass things off to you. Sure, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm on. Uh, so one, I don't, I don't know what the big deal is. I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the Greater Boston area, and I, you know, I can still see the rooftops of my car, and the cars of my neighbors. So I, I don't know what, why Sherry hasn't been able to join. So it's really not that bad on the East Coast. Uh, um, well, so actually, the first few slides were inactive. I got 30 inches just FYI in Framingham. Yeah, well, I suppose out in the boonies where utilities are probably sketchy at best on the best of days, uh, maybe that's the case. But maybe if you guys could move to civilization, that might be a little oh, that might help. Yeah. All right. How about, how about this? Uh, these first sets were UK slides. I think uh, why don't we why don't we move forward a couple slides and. Are you there, Jay? Hey, Jay. The internet is kind of sketchy, which is why we try to dial in. All right. Well, you're back online. So, so basic. 
Okay, uh, I'll do my best. So uh, this is the the code committee. Uh, for those for those of you who uh, many of you probably already know this, but they're basically just two working groups. One to support the deployments, which is led by Terry, and one to support uh, the architecture vision, which is led by Kays. And uh, if anyone would like to be part of those, just drop me a line. Uh, if you if your name is on here and you don't think you're part of them, drop me a line. Uh, we can we can go to the next slide. So all I'll say here is I, I, we've covered this before, but we're still in the 1.2 release cycle, and Terry's been leading this, and we still have version 1.2.4 and 1.2.5 on deck. Uh, the thing that I wanted to note on this slide, I guess first and foremost, is uh, there are a couple programs that I have influence on, uh, the one at Pfizer and, and Etrix. And I think it's important if we can get the message out about who's using 1.2. So in Etrix, uh, for the public server and for some of our major programs, uh, Etrix has been using 1.2 for a couple months now. And they were probably the first uh, off the line. At Pfizer, we are done user acceptance, test acceptance testing. We're currently deploying, and we expect to be on 1.2 next week. So from, from our perspective, from my perspective, uh, in the programs that I support, 1.2 is the platform. So, Jay, it looks like you've uh, dropped out, even though it looks like you're still connected. So maybe where you are, there are... I thought I heard him for a second. Are you there? I thought I heard him. It seems like the Internet infrastructure is better out in the boonings than in the yeah. city. <laughs> Apparently so. It's probably my internal... Okay. Why don't we keep uh, keep moving? Um, and if Jay's able to, to connect back in, uh, that's that's great. So as as Jay was saying, um, with with uh, projects that he is involved with at Pfizer and Etrix, uh, they are in the process of of deploying 1.2. And um, I think the message here is, as a community. We really are looking to see the community as a whole to move to 1.2, particularly for some of those organizations that were early adopters of the 1.0 and the 1.1 code bases. And so for now, uh, the, the community, the foundation is really looking to move forward to the 1.2 code base, as Jay was saying, with uh, version 1.2.4 and version 1.2.5 available later in February and April timeframes. I'll just add to that, Kevin, that uh, Michael J. Fox has adopted 1.2 and the Andy and PP9 data sets will be on there. Right, and Ken will update us more on that in a few minutes. So to keep things moving for, uh, forward, because time is running short with the remaining agenda that we need to get through, uh, this is a slide on the architecture working group. They had a meeting last week hosted by the Hive, and Case will walk us through that a little bit later, so we'll keep moving. Um, and as always, uh, around feature requests with the product management working group, we have uh, a number of features that are being requested by a number of community uh, members, including Rancho, Merck, Janssen, Abvi, and others that range uh, from from interface to analytical to new data data type sort of capabilities. So again, um, you know, the question really becomes uh, what kind of role does the foundation uh, play in bringing this all together so that as we move forward, we move forward as, as one community. So Jay, if you're back online um, and you want to make any sort of closing remarks, you can punch in your audio pin of pound one one two pound and um, we'll see what that does. If not, we'll keep moving forward for the sake of time. Okay, we'll keep moving forward. Uh, Julie, uh, I'm going to unmute you and give you an opportunity to update on the content committee. Julie? Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, can you hear me? Loud and clear. 
super. All right. So, um, so this is an overview of the um, the volunteers, and I emphasise volunteers. Um, so we're all trying to do this on on you know on top of our regular jobs. So in the content committee, we have got a lot of. Um, a lot of projects that we have to work on, so um, curation, ontologies, um, we also have data sets, data types, data analytics, and good old legal. Um, and so some of this overlaps with some of the other groups, but um, myself, Sherry, and Jay um, are continuously talking and sharing information. So next slide. So one of the main goals that we have is that we want to deliver these um, nice content bundles that are hosted and loaded, and we could do those um, via sort of like the domain areas, so like TCGA, GEO, or we could do it um, based on disease areas, so oncology, metabolic diseases, autoimmune, autoimmune, and so on. So we know the path on how to get there. We need to curate and load the public data sets. We need to host it in the cloud. And one important thing is we need to have an online agreement to cover all the legal aspects. So each one of the um, public data set holders, they have their rules and regulations. So we have to make sure that if we get in the middle, that every end user is, um, is following the rules and regulations. Um, if everything isn't volunteered, then there's going to be costs associated, and we need to have that covered. Um, and I'm working on a list of data sets um, with, that are already prepared by companies, and so we can put that on the website. So I have sent that out to quite a few groups, um, and I'd love it if I could get some feedback. Um, so then we can post all of it, um, but probably for now, whilst we wait for that to happen, I'll work with Rudy and we'll post what we have, and then we'll make that um, an iterative process so people can add um, what data sets they have when they become available. Next slide. So um, yeah, so if you want to add anything to this table, please um, please send an email to me, and we'll be more than happy to um, you know to add add what you have. Okay, so so if we want to do this content um, and that, that, as we know, there's TCGA, GEO, CCLE, ICGC, DBGAP, EBI, lots of others, and so we can look at ballpark pricing of what it would take to curate and load them, and it also depends on what we're going to load. Is it clinical data? Is it the molecular data? Is it all? Um, and so I'd like to ask people to volunteer data. Um, I know um, Rancho curates a lot of data sets for pharmaceutical companies, and every time we ask them, can we put this into the public domain? So if there are pharma members on the line that are, would like to volunteer, please reach out to us so we can do that. Um, we're also um, looking at the foundation potentially sponsoring um, some of these data sets. And then we are also working with um, other vendors that may help fund this. So um, we don't have anything that we can announce just yet, but we should be able to um, probably in the next month or so. Also, these um, data sets could be sold through the marketplace, and, and that's another option that we can um, list them there and make them available for, for people. Next slide. There are some um, content that is already available. It is not um, bundled within Transmart, but it is available that you can um, download it and, and load it yourself. And we are also working with um, some of the European groups um, and including the, those in all of our content work. And um, there's some additional data that is coming that will be made available um, to the foundation members. So um, we also wanted to um, work on guidelines, um, and I know Eric um, presented earlier on this. So some of the things that we wanted to do was put together standards um, on terminologies, ontologies, and dictionaries. Um, as everybody knows, there's a lot of work being done on integrating I2B2. And with that, it brings along 18 ontologies that are included in that. And so Paul at Harvard has done a great job of um, being able to demonstrate how that works and how you can use it. And so we want to, again, put these curation guidelines together. So we have a group of people, um, but we need somebody to volunteer and put up their hand and say, yeah, I'm going to write this um, by this timeline. And um, if, if we can't get that volunteer um, volunteering to happen, 
and then again it can be done for a cost and that and so we um, we have put pricing together for the um, for the board to consider it if we wanted to um, get somebody to do that for us but if anybody wants to volunteer um, to write any of these sections um, we, we would love that so you know please reach out to us so we've made a lot of headway on ETL um, guidelines so I want to do a big shout out to Annick at Sanofi, who's been absolutely fabulous, um, and she sent a beautiful guideline, which is called the ICE guideline, and that um, is available on the website now. Um, uh, Rudy um, put it up there, and then um, Rancho Biosciences also donated um, ETL guidelines as well, and that's on the um, website for anybody to download. They're in PDF documents. Um, we can also work on in bringing these together and having one complete ETL docu documentation. Um, but again, we either need a volunteer or it needs to be funded. So I, ca I think we kind of feel at the moment that we, we've, we're, in, we're in a good place with what we've got so far. So thank you very much, Annick. So um, we also had um, under uh, our area analytics and functionality. So we've been cataloging um, the capabilities of Transmart. So um, we have that list that can go on the website. I, again, I want to say a big thank you to Brian from Sanofi. So he did a lot of work on this, on what the gap analysis was, what, what was there. And then we're also listing um, you know, what integrations people are asking for. And I know within each one of the farmers, several people are doing their own integration. So hopefully we'll get that added um, to the community so we can all benefit for that. But we'll, all of this is going to go on the website. So, and again, it will be all updatable. So legal. So I said at the annual meeting I didn't want to do legal, but I ended up doing it. Um, so we work worked with the foundation's lawyers and they've done a great job um, of putting together this shrink wrap click through license so what we'll do is we'll put the responsibility on the user to check that they're following the rules and regulations of the public data sets so um, Keith and I need to um, review that first and um, see if we need any tweaking or changing but this was a you know a, a, it would be a hurdle we know how to do you know all the other stuff so now we've got this in place it allows us to start delivering on the content, so that, that was a great progress. So I want to thank everybody. As you can see, there's a lot of people helping us on the content committee, and we're all volunteering, and it takes a lot of effort and work, and I want to say a big thank you to everybody who has helped. We really appreciate it, and if you want to get in, got involved in the content committee areas and help us out, please um, email me or you know, any, any of the um, Transmart Foundation people and, and we'll get you signed up and included on the emails and the meetings. Great. Thank you, Julie. So we'll uh, move you right along. along. And Kevin, I, there's, a, there's a question for Julie on the question box. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Okay. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Ken Kubota, who uh, attended our annual meeting back in October in Ann Arbor, where he made uh, Michael J. Fox Foundation announcements, which has now led to uh, a datathon that is being organized, and he's going to provide an update on that. So, Ken, please take it away. Okay. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, I'm just going to really, just, I guess we only have six minutes. So, uh, the Michael J. Fox Foundation well, we, it's, it's been fun, uh, fun, founded in uh, year 2000, so we've been around for about 15 years, and we have applied about uh, half a billion dollars to Parkinson's disease research. Uh, 89 cents of every dollar that is donated is spent on par Parkinson's disease research. Uh, we have a, a global presence, and we, we fund research around the world. Uh, we don't hang on to our endowments. Uh, we spend all every dime that we we get every year uh, to uh, Parkinson's disease research. Next slide. And we find that uh, sharing data is key to our strategy. We understand that you know bi biology, the field of biological research, medical research is giving way to computation. 
And so we're, our intention is to make as much of our data accessible uh, to the public uh, for research as possible. And we see Transmart as the way to do it, as the vehicle. And so with our Fourier, uh, really using Transmart into uh, the Fourier of, of computation, uh, we're launching an RFA this quarter in February. We're calling it Biomarkers Across Neural, Neuro Neurodegenerative Diseases, or BAND for short. We're working with the Alzheimer's Association and the Garfield Weston Foundation in Canada. And it's a collaborative request for uh, applications to stimulate analysis across all, both Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And, um, and further data analysis of existing cohorts, but not limited to biomarker dis discovery. Um, you know, we want as many people from different fields to look at this inf information, this data as possible. And with the capability of Transmart, that what it brings to the table, we're really excited about what could happen this year. But there's more. Uh, the, the following month, or the following two months, we'll have a datathon. And I'll let uh, uh, Keith or Kevin explain what that is. I'll jump in. So uh, a datathon for us is taking the concepts of hackathons, testathons, bug fixathons to the next level in working with content and is to bring together a group of data scientists, biologists, developers uh, to work on a particular data set to advance our understanding of what we can do, develop new capabilities, uh, to make things work forward. So it's extending that concept of hackathon into the world of data analysis, and it's something we're pretty excited about. Um, we'll be having this uh, datathon uh, working on the ADME and PPMI data sets with Michael J. Fox. Uh, we're in discussions for another datathon around multiple sclerosis in the summer time frame. Uh, so if you have an interest in this, you know, contact me. This is a, an area of growth and interest for us as a foundation. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. Uh, we're really excited. Um, you know, we, we currently have a target for March 17th to 19th, but there might be an alternate date, as, uh, as Keith had mentioned. Um, we are thinking twice about having it overlap with the Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease uh, meeting in, in, uh, in France. So uh, we'll ha still have it at the location in Thompson Reuters offices, so stay tuned. Um, so, you know, our mission objective is to make sure that uh, we collaborate with the neuroscience community and to try to find a disease the answers to our disease uh, across neurological diseases. You know, we've come to the realization that uh, we can't get really good resolution of the different pathways of neurodegeneration of Parkinson's disease unless we look across neurological degenerative diseases. And this is why the platform is so important to us. This is why we're making the ADNI data normalized to our own observational studies in the Parkinson's Progression Markers Initiative uh, data. So, you know, our objectives are to have, have folks look at what, what are the common biomarker changes across the diseases, the common pathways, uh, the normal distribution of imaging and fluid biomarker, biomarkers across our controls and develop novel hypotheses and conclusions uh, out of the, the datathon and the biomarkers RFA and hopefully we'll really make a, uh, a dent into really coming out with interesting questions and finding new avenues for research here. So uh, we expect anywhere between maybe 15 to 20 data scientists to come in uh, to the venue uh, to perform the research. We'll have neuroscientists and uh, MDs on staff to help guide the data scientists in, in clinically meaningful um, directions of, of research. And we'll running the latest version of Transmart will be running version 1.2. This is the same version um, that we're, we're developing our own data repository on Transmart, which we're going to be putting on the internet uh, that's going to exist and continue to exist long after the datathon, and we'll keep adding uh, new data sets to it uh, for public to uh, come up with new hypotheses and really kind of 
uh, create this public information database that everyone can come to. We understand that Transmart is becoming the de facto standard among pharmaceutical companies. So we're using this as a conduit to communicate our data, make it easy, lower the bar for research into neurodegenerative diseases. So um, this is something that, um, that has been, analysis has been done uh, across what is available in the, in the PPMI uh, data sets. See that, uh, uh, you know, PPMI is a, a five-year study, uh, observational study, where we take both clinical and biological specimens. We take urinalysis, uh, cerebral spinal fluid, um, and we draw blood, and we take MRI scans and PET scans, and uh, we try to make it available. Uh, in the current format, it's, um, it takes a lot of overhead for uh, data scientists to put all this information together and really understand the content of this, uh, of this, of this data. Next slide. And this is also true for the ADNI data, um, and it's even more uh, ominous. And we're hoping that uh, by putting it on Transmart, next slide, we can make it, make it a lot more uh, tenable and in a, in a much quicker time frame. Now, folks will be spending you know, a few hours rather than several days or even weeks to organize the data and understand the content of what they're looking at and potentially you know, what sections of the data would make sense uh, for their interest in research. So this is the interface, and this is how it will be presented. Uh, you know, when folks go in, we'll ask everybody, the contestants of the Datathon, and anyone uh, who currently has access to ADNI or PPMI data, we're going to give them a link and uh, a password protected logon to our ver public version of Transmart, so they'll be able to very quickly access this data, query it, and get on with their research. So, I think that concludes uh, what I have to say about what we're doing, and I'm opening the floor to any questions that anyone may have. That's great, Ken. Thanks. Um, Kevin, I'm, I'm looking at the time and uh, seeing that we're a little bit uh, running a little bit late here. Uh, can we push these uh, next two events to the next community call? Does that make sense? Sure, we can do that. So uh, let's thank both uh, Case and Terry as well as Peter for preparing uh, an update on the bug fixathon and the recent workshop. And as, as you said, Keith, we'll make sure to provide updates on the February call. It is important, though, I think, for everybody to be aware, and we're looking for participation in the bug fixathon, which kicks off this Thursday, January 29th. A few days ago, um, Terry had sent out uh, some information about that. Later today, we'll just send out a reminder. And uh, I would just personally like to say our success with the Bug Fixathon is, is really dependent upon community support. And if we can generate the kind of activity that we saw uh, last summer in the, the late May, June, July time frame, we can really um, um, move this sort of initiative forward. So, uh, uh, Keith, why don't you close out our call with whatever concluding remarks you want to make? Keith? Yes, Kevin. Um, no, I think that in terms of uh, what we're doing at the Bug Fixathon, that sounds fantastic. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the version two piece that, that Case has for us, I, I'm, I'd love to hear more about that, and, and we'll hear about that next time. But if there, um, I don't know if we have time for any questions. If there are any questions, that we've answered those kind of along the way here, Kevin. Yes. Yeah, so I, th I think earlier we had a lot of uh, feedback with respect to Eric's uh, call for. Uh, contributions to the training materials. Um, we'll make sure to note those and get people involved. 
Um, I think there was a question about the PPMI and ADNI data, and Michael J. Fox uh, uh, through Ken Kubota are making those available. Uh, there is a process for, for getting access to those data through, through Loney, and if you have interest, uh, get in touch with Ken Kubota, and as a follow-up to this uh, call, we'll, we'll send out some additional information. Our, um, uh, also important to note that uh, CASE uh, encourages you to uh, visit the wiki, and we'll send out the specific URL to those on this call. Uh, where you can learn more about the workshop and uh, what has occurred and what are some of the next steps. So again, um, thank you. That everybody. sounds good. I think with that. Yeah, go ahead. I think with that we should close. Um, so thanks everyone for coming and uh, appreciate your your time and effort here. Um, we'll be digging out here in uh, in Massachusetts for a little while, so some of us will be quite busy, but. Uh, Appreciate everyone coming out, and uh, our next call, Ke Kevin, will be when? The third Tuesday of February, which I believe is the 17th. It's the third Tuesday. Of and then we'll have uh, we'll have a quick presentation from from Terry and Peter on the bug fixathon, and we'll go through the architecture uh, workshop with these case. And then if anyone else has anything, please contact Kevin. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.